All right, sports fans, how's everybody out there doing? William Martin coming at you one more time here on YouTube with another edition of the 300 Pounds of Sports Knowledge Podcast. With the start of the 2023 MLB season right around the corner, who has what it takes to win the American League West? This has been a division that has been dominated by the Houston Astros in recent years. The Astros have won five out of the last six AOS titles, and in doing so, they've also won a pair of World Series championships. The Astros enter this season as the defending World Series champs, and they're looking to do it again. But first and foremost, they need to take care of their business in the West. Now, more than likely, this is probably going to be the last ride for Dusty Baker as the manager of the Astros. He signed a one-year extension last uh, this past offseason, rather. Uh, he's going to be 74 years of age in June. And you think about Dusty Baker's MLB journey. He has done it all. He was a phenomenal player in his day. Uh, most notably, he'll always be remembered for being in the on-deck circle when Hank Aaron hit his historic 715th home run in 1974. Then, of course, uh, his managerial career, taking the San Francisco Giants to the playoffs multiple times, which included the National League pennant in 2002, uh, taking the Chicago Cubs to the playoffs, taking the Cincinnati Reds and Washington Nationals both to the playoffs. And, of course, finally here uh, with the Houston Astros, where he was able to finally taste championship glory after some coming so close uh, so many times. Now, for the Astros as a team, they continue to lose players in free agency, but the beat goes on. Now, as far as this lineup goes, Jordan Alvarez has quickly become one of the most revered sluggers in Major League Baseball, and you just look back to the Astros uh, World Series Championship last year, and that is all the proof you need right there. Is there a third consecutive 30-homer season coming for Kyle Tucker? we got to wait and see. Jose Altuve bounced back uh, for a solid season, and the veteran hitter at the top of this Astros lineup is showing you that he could still get it done. The emergence of shortstop Jeremy Pena. We saw Pena be a player for this team in that World Series run last year, and I think it's going to continue over into this season. The addition of Jose Abreu, and this is something that I feel like enough people have not talked about this offseason for the Houston Astros. A professional hitter throughout his entire career. Obviously, he spent all of his MLB career with the White Sox up until this point. Uh, but I think a guy like Jose Abreu can come in and have a big-time impact for this Astros club. Can Michael Brantley stay healthy? And, of course, Brantley was expected to be a big part of the Astros' World Series push last year. He got injured. Of course, that led uh, to uh, getting Trey Mancini from the Baltimore Orioles. But nonetheless, it's a situation that Brantley could come back and, get, and be healthy. He's another guy, a professional hitter. He will definitely add depth to this Houston lineup. Now, pitching was the name of the game for Houston last year en route to winning the World Series, but they're no longer going to have the luxury of having Justin Verlander in that rotation as the veteran and future Hall of Famer signed with the New York Mets. You still got Fran Valdez. He won a career-high 17 games last year while he went over 200 innings for the first time in his career. You got Luis Garcia, who has stepped up. Lance McCullers, uh, that's going to be the interesting thing. He's been injured lately. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what happens for him heading into the season. But make no mistake about it, the Astros are definitely still going to be a force to be reckoned with. You look at the Seattle Mariners and the Mariners, they're looking to build off of last year's trip to the postseason. And there was a lot of excitement uh, for this team in the Pacific Northwest. They beat Toronto in the wild card round, got swept by the Blue Jays, pardon me, by the Astros. Please forgive me. Um, in the divisional round. But the thing is, they weren't an easy out in those contests. So I'm really interested to see if this young team uh, is going to be able to build off of that. I feel that Julio Rodriguez is obviously the future of the Seattle club. 
Uh, we saw what he could do last year. He's a real deal as he looks to avoid, you know, the sophomore jinx. Uh, something big for this Houston team. They picked up or acquired, rather, outfielder Teoscar Hernandez from the Toronto Blue Jays. And I think that's going to be important because he's going to provide protection for a guy like Julio Rodriguez in this lineup. You sign A.J. Pollock. And then you look at the Seattle pitching staff. They were fifth in the American League, American League in team ERA last year. You got Logan Gilbert, possibly a Cy Young candidate, in my opinion. He, you know, in his brief career, he has gotten better and better. George Kirby, will he be able to avoid the sophomore jinx after coming, you know, making his big league debut for Seattle in 2022? Will year number two for Robbie Ray in Seattle be better than year number one? Of course, we saw him win that Cy Young Award uh, in his final year in Toronto in 2021. Came to Seattle after signing that big contract. Went 12-12 and last year, but most notably a 3.71 earned run average. So we got to wait and see what happens there. Uh, for manager Scott Service, I feel like the sky is the limit for this team. And I think, you know, what we saw from Seattle last year was very good for baseball, being that, you know, the Pacific Northwest had not been able to taste postseason baseball for so long. So it's going to be interesting to see, can this Seattle team be able to build off of that? You got the Texas Rangers here. And after six straight losing seasons, there have been a wealth of changes in North Texas. John Daniels is no longer running the front office for the Rangers as that job is now in the hands of Chris Young. The Rangers also went out and got a new skipper in Bruce Bochy, who was coaxed out of retirement. And it looked like, you know, Bochy was done, you know, when he stepped away from the San Francisco Giants. And you think about this guy, he's got 25 years under his belt as an MLB manager, more than 2000 career wins, 2003 to be exact, which is 12th all time. But the Rangers are hopeful that his championship experience, as well as that championship pedigree that, you know, helped the Giants win three World Series championships in a five-year span, will come with him to North Texas. First and foremost, for the Rangers to flip this around, their pitching has to improve. Uh, last year, their team ERA of 4.22 was 12th in the American League. Yes, there were three teams that were actually worse than them in that category. And they also allowed 581 walks, which was 14th. Texas, we've seen them hard at work this offseason in trying to improve this pitching staff. We saw them sign Jacob DeGrom, Nathan Avaldi, Andrew Haney, and they also acquired Jake Odorizzi from the Atlanta Braves. Now, of course, DeGrom was the centerpiece of things for Texas this offseason as they gave the former two-time National League Cy Young Award winner $185 million over the next five years. Now, there is no doubt about it that DeGrom can pitch. The biggest thing is, can he stay healthy? DeGrom only made 26 starts over his last two years for the Mets, but the bottom line is, when he is on, he's on. So it's one of those where if Texas can find a way to get 25 starts at least out of Jacob DeGrom this year, 25 solid Jacob DeGrom type starts, you know what? Then you got something. Martin Perez was 12 and 8 last year with a career ERA of 2.89. Can he follow that up with another solid season? We got to wait and see. Uh, the a previous offseason saw Texas spin big on their lineup with Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon. Now, these guys won't hit for average, but they got plenty of pop in their bats, and that's going to be the big thing. Can the Rangers get some guys on base when both Seager and Simeon, especially Simeon, are at the plate? So it's going to be interesting to see how much of an improvement will we see from this Texas team uh, heading into the season because it's a lot of new parts there. For the Los Angeles Angels, it's hard to believe, but – Eight out of the last nine MLB seasons have seen them finish with a losing record. And in recent years, the Angels have arguably had the two best players in the sport. When you think about it with Shohei Otane and Mike Trout, and you think about the amount of American League MVP, award, MVP awards that these guys are racking up, but it really has not amounted to a hill of beans for the Angels. And more than likely, it's probably going to be the same here 
in 2023. Now, Phil Nevin is in his first year as a manager of the Angels. Uh, the Artie Moreno cloud still hangs over this team. All signs looked uh, late in, into uh, the season last year that Moreno was going to be selling uh, the Angels until he had a change of heart uh, this offseason. And, of course, things have not gone well in recent years on the Artie Moreno watch for the Halos. Is this going to be the final year for Shohei with the Angels? I do believe so. Uh, it's a scenario where I think Shohei is going to ball out. I think he's going to put up big numbers because he wants to, you know, get that big contract. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, and I'm not the only one who feels like this, but there is a pretty good possibility that Shohei could become MLB's first $500 million man next off season. Can Mike Trout stay healthy? He has not appeared in at least 130 games for the Angels since 2019. Of course, 2020 was a shortened COVID year, but nonetheless, the future Hall of Famer has had an issue in recent years of staying healthy. Will Anthony Rendon continue to be a free agent flop for the Angels? Three injury-plagued years uh, after Los Angeles gave him that big contract after he helped the Washington Nationals win the World Series back in 2019. Will outfielder Taylor Ward be able to build off of his career year uh, last year? We saw Ward bat 281 with 22, 23 homers and 65 runs batted in. So these are question marks, some question marks for the Angels. And on top of that, in regards to Los Angeles' pitching, other than Shohei, because we know how this guy can affect the, the uh, game, both with his arm and his bat, but he only takes the bat, takes the mound rather every fifth day. Where are the other wins going to come from in this rotation? And with that said, if the Angels can't get the pitching, how are they going to find a way to keep up in the American League West? Uh, for the final team to talk about in the AL West, obviously, is the Oakland Athletics. And unfortunately for the A's, they lost 102 games last season. And there's a big possibility that there's another 100 loss season on the horizon for this team in Northern California. Big question that hangs over the athletics right now is will they remain in the Bay Area or head to Las Vegas? And you can see the writing on the wall that they probably will uh, be headed to Las Vegas unless something changes at the 11th hour uh, for them in Oakland. And it's very unfortunate because, you know, Oakland and that Bay Area is a very sports crazy part of the country. And I will say this, you know, and I'll talk about this, you know, at some point later on during the season in more depth. But the thing about it is, if you're an Oakland sports fan, you've had it tough in the recent years. You've lost the Raiders to Las Vegas. The Warriors have gone back over the Bay uh, to the San Francisco side. Obviously, if you're in Oakland, you can still go out there and support them. But now the A's have been a part of the fabric for uh, the Bay Area, as far as baseball goes now, for close to 60 years. And the thing is, is like they've put talented teams out there. They just have been unable to keep them because make no mistake about it. When you put some talent out there in the field, the fans in Oakland will come out to support. But nonetheless, speaking of that talent, we saw this front office trade away uh, most of that talent prior to the start of the 2022 season. And because of that, Oakland was near the bottom of most statistical categories in the American League last season and I don't think that is going to change uh heading into this year no a starter was able to win 10 games last year that could once again be a problem as their team ERA of 4.52 was 13th in the AL last year and it won't get any better this year for athletics manager Mark Kotze he just walked into a bad uh, situation in Oakland with his club last year and I don't see things uh, getting any better so and asking you know who's going to win this division obviously and from what you just heard me say the A's are definitely going to be picking bringing up the rear uh, I look at this Astros team I still say that they are the team to be in this division it's not going to be a scenario where Houston is going to go out there and win 106 games I don't think so but nonetheless, they are still the class of this division. They just have a system in place and they know how to get it done. And, you know, that's a tip of the hat to their front office due to the fact that, you know, again, like I said, they have lost, you know, some key guys from them from those championship teams in recent years. 
and the ball just keeps rolling down the field. Seattle will once again be a contender, but I just really – I'm interested to see – Will there be any hangover from last year as far as they finally got to the postseason and will they be hungry enough to build off of that? We got to wait and see. Texas will be improved, but I'm not sure if they're going to be improved enough to be a playoff team, even with the expanded postseason. There's a lot of new pieces that, you know, are going to take time to gel, in my opinion, for this Texas team, both in the front office as well as on the field. So we got to wait and see what happens. And again, with the Angels, like it has been in recent years, this is a top-heavy team. Very talented between Shohei and Mike Trout, nonetheless. But where is the production going to come from those other 23 guys on this team? So at the end of the day, I still think the Astros are the team to beat in the American League West, and I think they will do it for the sixth time in the last seven years. So, folks, that is going to wrap it up. And as always, I want to take this time out to thank you for tuning into the 300 Pounds of Sports Knowledge Podcast here on YouTube. I want to take this time out to thank all of you fine folks out there for tuning in. And if you have not already, please feel free to subscribe to this channel. Now, if you are on Twitter, please feel free to follow me at 300 Pounds of Sports. And like I always say, if you follow me, it'll be my pleasure to follow you right back. There's also the Sports Discussion Group on Facebook at the Sports Depot 365. Now, you can check it out. Drop a line and be a part of one of the better sports debating sites going on social media. So once again, fine folks, my name is William Martin. I am signing off and I'm saying take care and have yourselves a wonderful day.